Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos of how to use dbintegrate. In this simple video I'm going to show you how we add a dictionary to dbintegrate and then how we add some data sources to that dictionary. The data sources in question will be a Microsoft Excel file, a text file and a simple empty SQL Express table. The first step is to load up DB Integrate from the start menu, which I already have prepared. And firstly, we're going to create the dictionary. So we go to the dictionary option on the menu at the top and we press create dictionary. Now this loads up the create dictionary wizard and all we need to simply do is type in the name of the dictionary. I'm going to go with DBI demos and press finish. This then adds the dbi underscore demos .udd to our tree. And if we expand it, we can see projects and data sources. These are both empty because we haven't defined anything there. The actual dictionary itself is created in our default new dictionary directory. You can change this if you want, but in most cases, you'll probably leave it at the default path. The dictionary is also written to the registry as well. So you may encounter user access control prompts, particularly if you're using Windows 7. Um, but you can bypass that kind of issue if you run as administrator. So next, what we're going to do is um, add in a text file. I'll just show you that quickly. We have our email underscore list.txt file. As you can see, we've got some data in here. This is all some just some dummy data. It's not got anyone's real um, information. And we'll be using this data in a later video to show you how you can do a mapping job and apply some processing steps to your data to clean it up. So please keep an eye out for that one. It's very important to make sure that you have your files closed when adding your data to DB Integrate. And all we need to do is right click on data sources and pre press create new. We simply define a name for our data source. So I'm going to go with txt underscore email. It's very good to make sure that you use data source names which are meaningful and so you'll know looking back exactly what's in that data. And I am very keen on putting the data type in. We then have a data source type drop down and we just simply choose CSV native or CSV via ODBC for a flat text file. I'm just going to go with CSV native in this example. You then need to just define the path of your um, text file. In the extensions drop down, you can choose either .csv, .txt or .asterisk. Um, this would just literally uh, only show you CSV files in that location or only .txt files. If I press next now with it set to .csv, then I wouldn't see any tables in this scenario. If I press .asterisk, I would see uh, a PowerPoint presentation, which makes me realise I haven't slept my full path. <laughs> One le more level data sources. Select.txt and it only shows text files. I'm going to just add all because I want both of those and press next and finish. open up the email audit table and press fetch. I can see the column or table headers um, but there's no data in this area and there's zero rows in this text file. Whereas if I open up email list and press fetch I can see I've got 23 of 23 rows and I can just scroll up and down them. I can also use the fetch and limit to uh, options here. So I can limit to just one row or I can untick and view all rows. That's a really useful tool for very large data sets. 
Next I'm going to add a Microsoft Excel data source. Again, I shall show it to you. I've got an address underscore audit spreadsheet. Uh, I've got three sheets here, audit one, audit two, and postcode audit, which is the sheet I'm interested in. It's very important with Excel to make sure that you've got sheet names um, as it will use these as the reference mainly. Um, and it won't actually use the workbook name at all. So this is again a very short table, a 28 rows. If I close that down, return to DB Integrate and do create new on data source. Again, I type in a name. The data source names are limited to 15 characters and you can't have any funny things in there or um, DB Integrate will uh, tell you off. So I select Microsoft Excel from the drop down and press next. And then select workbook. Again, I just browse to location. It's got it up in there for me already, which is handy. And press open and then press next. As you can see, the table names are actually our sheet names. So I just select the one sheet I want. If I accidentally add an additional table that I don't want, I can just press the remove button and press next, finish. And if I view the data, you can see it's in DB Integrate here. If I expand on the uh, postcode underscore audit button here, I can see the list of uh, column headers that I've got in my spreadsheet. It picks up the first row as your column headers. And then the last table I'm going to add is an empty SQL Express table. I'm just going to select create new. I'm going to add in the name and select SQL Server Client from the drop down and press next. This is a slightly more complicated looking wizard. Uh, so in this one, all I need to do is select the drop down and then it will find all the local network to SQL Express instances that are available to your machine. Um, so I'm just going to go with the correct one, which is my SQL 2012 Express. You can then choose Windows authentication or putting in a username and password, which is what I'm going to do in this instance. You then need to simply select your database and the database owner. Press next and then choose your table. Press finish and that is also added to DB Integrate. If I right click and view that it will be an empty table which it is but we can see our column headers already set up for us which we will use later on in another um, video. So thank you very much. Uh, please view our other videos for further hints, tips and demonstrations. We have a YouTube channel which is TransopTube and if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to email me mharrican at transoft.com. Thank you very much.